We're not gonna waste time. We're not gonna waste time. We're supposed to be alive in the tube, in the tube of YouTube, very soon. We're gonna wait to see if it's broadcasting live. The last time I had the, some kind oh, of issue yeah. with that. Yeah, and it takes a little bit to start tonight. Oh, it's starting now. It's right. starting now. So we should be, yeah. Broadcasting live. Yeah, we should be live on YouTube. Boom! We're back for the Truman Show, episode 122. Feel highly favored, as always, being with Santos Benacci tonight, Saturday Night Live on the Truman Show with Santos. How are you, Santos? Great, brother. Yourself? Yeah, very good. Better than good, better than most. And I have a very, very special guest tonight. Lily is here with us to uh, for the next two hours in that um, hangout. To, uh, also, she has questions about astrology and all that, so it's going to be a good time to uh, establish a great connection, to nourish the connection, because the connection's already established. Lou, I've been looking at uh, Lily. I discovered her, but I said it in uh, the other Truman show we did together the other week. We did something together, me, you, and DVG, and that's what I said. I discovered uh, Lily uh, in her video on YouTube, she talks about astrology a lot, and she's very, very knowledgeable in astrology. And I was impressed uh, at the way she speaks and everything. So that's what attracted me uh, to her very, uh, no, great mind, great mind, Lily. And I seen that as soon as I got on your video. It's something, you know, greatness, you recognize that when you see it. That's for sure. And you're Thank great. You, so Thank you. <laughs> I can feel that. So welcome here tonight. And that's it. Tonight we have a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about uh, for sure. It's always, uh, you know, very, uh, we, we don't waste uh, our time and we make sure that we have great content. And tonight we're going to talk about uh, the periodic table of element to start because I, you know, I always been a very, very big uh, fan of science i always been fascinated by science in my uh, college years and in when i was in uh, high school and all that so it's always something that attracted me but i always looked at it in the program mind with the program mind before so now i'm very curious to to see that table unfolding with all the elements but with my awake uh, state that I am now. So, you know, with a more uh, clear point of view on it, with a more awake mind or something. So I'm sure Santos can tell us a lot of stuff about it. Uh, like always, he's a great teacher. That's why we have here. I think it's no secret for nobody. So uh, Santos, if you want, you can go on. And after I have other subjects, we'll just uh, wait and uh, we'll bring this on after. No problem. Yeah, for sure, brother. Um, okay, so we're looking at the periodic table. I think I'll share my um, screen. That would be a good start. We're going to have a look at some uh, interesting things about the periodic table, eh? How's that? Yeah, yeah. All right, so first of all, um, there's, there's the table there. And... Um, it's just impressive how can you see that yep we see it all right great so <clears throat> these are the so-called elements l being um electricity okay these are the different rates of electricity that's why they are still called elements simply because they are electrical okay now an element is not the same as a compound water is a compound it has two elements hydrogen and oxygen so it is made of elements but it is a compound because it has more than one so these though are the basic uh elements and really there are only um I suppose the, 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 the number goes up to 94 plutonium and then um, you, you can see here that they've got up to 118 of all these elements that are sort of being um, uh, accepted as elements and a lot of those are man-made. Okay, so... but. Generally, we're looking at about 95, 94, 95 elements, okay? So, now, first thing you notice is that the, the table is 18 wide, okay? 18. 
um, elements wide, and that is because we're looking at the key numbers of 9, 18, 27, 36. 36 gives you 360 degrees. So, and hold on, just to make a little uh, short statement, also the 18, like you're saying, uh, it's three times six. And I was thinking the other day why the age of majority is 18 in Quebec and Canada, wherever. It's all 18, so why 18 years old? You know, that's another thing I was wondering, I was going to talk to you about. Yeah, good. There's a lot, there's a lot in that. Yeah, yeah. And, those, and those numbers have to do with um, um, Saturn is... Uh, Saturn and Jupiter are the timekeepers. We know, of course, the Sun is the timekeeper and the Moon. We know that they, they keep time. That's, that's obvious. But um, the real timekeepers in the um, uh, astrological system are Saturn, Jupiter, and the big boys, okay, like Uranus, for instance, 84, 84 um, years. Now, that is a... Um, processional number, okay? So we won't go deeply into that, but I'm going to bring out some interesting things, okay? Let's let's have a look at some interesting things that I've discovered. And I know um, I know uh, there's a lot in here. It's infinite. But what I've discovered is um, the four main elements of the, your body, which make up 99% of your body, are hydrogen, which is number one. Let's have a look at that. If you can see my, um, there's hydrogen number one. So its number is one. And then, of course, these three elements here, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, and they are all in a row, six, seven, and eight. Now, these, these four elements out of all the elements in the periodic table actually are prominent in religious themes, okay? And the animals that are prominent in religion are always the serpent, uh, the lamb, the goat, and the cow, yeah? Okay, well, <clears throat> when we look at these elements, when you add the number of hydrogen, number one, with carbon, six, and nitrogen, seven, and oxygen, eight, you come to 22. And those are the number of the amino acids in your body. 22 is very important. So 98% of your body is made up of these four elements, and they all add up to 22, okay? Now, of course, there's 22 tarot cards, and there's all of these expressions like catch 22, and we know 22 is very, very important. So that's the first, first thing we notice. But what people don't normally notice is that the elements are celebrated in motifs um, and you'll always see the most prominent animal um, in religious motifs is the serpent well hydrogen is rooted in the word hydra okay and the hydra is the serpent so the most common animal and the, the most common element is hydrogen and the serpent then we come to uh, carbon. Carbon is actually an anagram for cabra, which is the word for goat in many languages. Carbon, cabra, and that's the goat. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is the lamb, and oxygen, of course, is ox, the bull. Uh, where do we get the lamb from nitrogen? Well, it's easy, simple. Nitrogen is uh, the first two letters of nitrogen, N-I, um, actually are uh, the latter part of the word ignite, okay? To ignite, igni is fire, okay? And nitrogen, which should have an I-G in front of it, ignitrogen, is the fire element, and the lamb is the fire. Uh, carbon is the earth element, and the goat Capricorn is the earth and oxygen, the ox, is the, um, the um, uh, air element of Libra, okay? So now what we've got is we've got four um, 
uh, four signs of the zodiac. We've got Aries, Capricorn, Cancer, and um, Libra. Those are the four cardinal signs that make up the cardinal cross. And these four elements um, are actually um, uh, partnered up with these four cardinal signs. So nitrogen number seven, remember in Revelation, the lamb has seven seals because it's nitrogen, number seven, igni. Igni is the lamb. Igne is another way of saying lamb. Okay, agnes, ignis, igneous, fire. So that's Aries. Uh, hydrogen is the hydra, which is the... Uh, um, the hydra or the serpent is a um, is a constellation that is next to uh, Cancer. It's actually the head of the hydra is in Cancer, and that's hydrogen, which is water, which is the serpent, which is Cancer. And then uh, the ox, of course, is in uh, Libra, and um, Capricorn is the goat. So you've got all those uh, elements. Hydrogen is expressing water. Carbon, earth, nitrogen, fire, and um, oxygen, of course. Ox is air. So we have the four most common elements, the four most common animals, bar none. There are no other animals you will never be able to squeeze. Maybe the lion, but you will never be able to squeeze in any religions throughout the universe um, four more common animals than the serpent, the lamb, the goat, and the cow. Jesus is the good shepherd, Christ, and Krishna is the good cow herd. And so we see all of these gods like Thor with his cows, Jupiter, Zeus, and his bulls. We see Mithra and his cows. So we, the, it's the element of uh, oxygen. So now, the other thing which um, impresses me about the uh, periodic table is um, when we go to the last element, we come to, um, well, the last in my mind. I, I take uh, uh, 95, uh, 94 here. Can you see 94, guys? Yeah. Yes. All right. So that is named after Pluto, you see. Now, 93 is named after who? Neptune, yeah. Neptunium. Uranium, oh my, my. Yeah, and 92 is uranium. So let's have a look at this. Um, when you go to the board here, we'll find something quite amazing. This will, um, well, it, I mean, it impresses me. I don't know about most of the listeners, but this is the sort of stuff that grabs me, and I see patterns. Uh, we see patterns, then you start to see form, and you start to see shape, and you start to see creation unfur unfurling and how it really works. What I've done is I've started <clears throat> at the 85th element, and I'm going to show you that whoever conspired to put all the planets in order in the periodic table in its respective order and I'll show you how all those planets line up, not just Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus, which are the, the um, well, they're the invisible planets, and they are the outer-lying planets. This one was discovered in, uh, say, 1781. Neptune was discovered in 18, uh, say, 50, somewhere there, and Pluto in 1935. And so that's why they named this, um, these elements, uranium, neptunium, and plutonium. Now, if we go back, what we're going to find is all the other planets are also in line. And this is the astrological order, because the moon is always first. Why? Because her orbit is 28 days, so she's the shortest. Pluto's orbit is 250 or 248 years, and he's the last one. So we've got Mercury, 88 days, Venus, 225, Sun, one year, and year means Yah Ram, Jehovah the Ram, because that's the Sun, the Ram in the sky. 
Mars is two years, Jupiter's 12 years, and Saturn is 13 ye uh, 30 years. So, do we see this order? Well, yes, we do. And let's have a look at that, please, shall we? So, we'll just first of all, we'll just wipe this off, and we'll put the names of the elements. So, let's have a go. And you will start to see what I see on the periodic table. So let's go back to, we're starting at 85, shall we? 85. It's called astatine. Well, let's write down astatine. Okay. What's, um, can someone help me with? Uh, right on. Right on. Radon. Beautiful. And radon is a, a, what they call, look down here, and you see it's a halogen. Okay, now, when you look at the word halo, it comes from, um, rooted in the Greek word for light and salt. Okay? So, um, um, these are, are salt mineral, mineral elements, and they are light producing. Look at this. Neon, they make neon lights out of that. Helium, argon, number 18. Krypton, xenon, and radon. So now we've got radon, and I'm, I'm going to show you how this is mercury, okay? And astatine is the moon. Then we come to um, 87, and we have francium. So francium is supposed to be Venus. Well, how do we get that? Well, we'll see, won't we? And look at this. Next, we're looking for the sun. Ra diem, ra god. Ra, ra, beautiful ra. <laughs> yep, radium. Diem means god. By I the way, ra I god. knew there was something. I knew there was something with that. <laughs> Without knowing. Yeah, <laughs> eighty-nine actinium. Now, if you're thinking ahead, you will have already you will have already worked out absolutely all the planets are in line from the moon, starting at 85, all the way to 84. The ten planets they are all in a row, all there, just sitting there. For me, like dogs' testicles, but for other people who don't appreciate words so much, maybe not. <laughs> now. <laughs> Number 90, um, Thorium. And we've got for Saturn, um, we've got here 91, pro Protactinium. Protactinium. Alrighty. So let's just now jump back on to the... Uh, my screen and let's have a look at what we've got shall we so this one's this one's a no-brainer so most people will, will just they'll just have to agree with that because Uranus is uranium Neptune is Neptunian and Pluto is plutonium now do you think that someone did this? Once I show you that these these elements are actually, in fact, the ten planets, do you think that um, some geniuses conspired to do this, or do you think the um, the elements are disposed in such a way that everything is syncretic when you pay attention and it just harmonizes because the universe is harmonious? It's divine. The whole thing is very divine. Yep. Okay. So let's go back from here, shall we? 94 Pluto, Plutonium, the 10th planet. Ninth planet. Now, by the way, this is in the order of astrology because why? Because this is the true order. This is, in fact, the true order. We know from astrology that the moon is the first lady, Mercury second, then Venus, then the sun, then Mars, then Jupiter and Saturn. Everyone who is learned and reads books 
knows this order. They've seen it many, many, many times. This is the order of the planets. So as we go back, we come to Prota. Prota. Now, Prota, and you can see also the word act in here. Act and prot, Prota actinium. Okay, now, Prota is Saturn because he is the prototype. He is the first. So in, in mythology, Saturn is Prota because <clears throat> he is the first father. He is the grandfather of all atoms because he is Kronos, time. And whatever appears in time, he is the one with his sickle, the old man Saturn, and his um, scythe, who actually is the death grim reaper. So he gives birth in time and he destroys in time. Now, when we look at hydrogen, you'll notice um, that hydrogen also, the most common isotope of hydrogen is called what? Proteum. Proteum. And that's interesting because 99% of hydrogen in the universe is the isotope of proteum. And that also looks very much, so the first element, the first element, hydrogen, is actually called proteum. Now, not a lot of people know this because they just say generally it's, it's hydrogen, whereas it's proteum. Um, and so... Proto, you get words like protocol, uh, prototype, that's Saturn, simple. Now, Saturn has a son, Jupiter, Zeus. Kronos has a son called Zeus. And his other name in Nordic is Thor. Thor. Yeah. Oh. The, the Thoris fields of Thor, Taurus oh. field. Because Jupiter is the god of gods. Mars is the god of action. Actinium. Mars is martial, action. It's the planet of action. Therefore, appropriately, Mars gets to act in actinium. The sun is Ra. Ra, god. Dium. It's also very close to the word uh, radius. Ra Dios is Ra God. Ra Dium. Whether you put an M there or an S, doesn't matter. I've showed how radius comes from Ra, the radius of a circle, because when you do that, you get a radius. Okay, so radium. That's why we listen God to the radio. Is yeah. the sun. That's why yeah. we listen to the radio. That's right, radio. That's why Marconi called it a radio, ra god, radio, yeah. because he said it vibrates. It's a vibration, radiate, radio, radium. This also, they, are, they all vibrate because these are all different rates of vibration. Francium, that's a no-brainer. That's Venus. Venus is Isis. Everywhere you go in France, you see, you know, like Notre, Notre Dame. Who's the Dame? Well, it's Isis because that is a temple devoted to Isis. So all of these Isis themes, Paris, Paris means for Isis. Paris. Para for Isis. Paris. Okay, so France has always been Venetian. Simple. Mercury, radon. Well, Mercury is the imitator of the sun, radium. So radon, Mercury, the little sun, which is sometimes called Ra as well. Mercury is called Ra. Yes, the sun is Ra and so is Mercury because Mercury is always close to the sun. Okay, and then we have astatine. Well, that's a no-brainer. Asta is astra, which is the star, which is the moon. 
and whenever you see this ene on the end of it, it's interesting because not many elements have I and E on the end of it like this. This is a very unique element. Teen, well, Magdalene, Helene, Selene, all of this ene. So if you just took that out, that T out of there, you've got Astra Ene. That's the moon, guys. There's no doubt about this. This is the 10 elements no of the periodic there. table, yeah. and they are all in a row. But you know, you, you were talking about the first name was Astartine, I think. It flashed in my head. I was thinking about, for some reason, Aspartame. Okay. But why, why do they take, they choose that name, like to describe that product, like Aspartame? Like, why that Aspa? You know, it's not a word that you find in the dictionary. Uh, like, normally, it's, it's the word that they, that they have made up for the product, no? So is it, uh, it, does it have to do with some, like it's maybe just me making things up? Then? No, no. Those guys, they actually do think about the words that they coin, okay? Yeah. And, and they do put radicals in their words. Radicals are sy syllables um, that have meaning. And that's what I'm actually teaching in astrotheology, that you don't look at words. You look at the radicals, which are That's monosyllables, it. okay, which is usually two vowels and a consonant. Usually it's just one vowel and a consonant, but sometimes it's two vowels and a consonant or sometimes even two consonants and a vowel, but it's a syllable. And so what they do is they make that. So aspartame, you know, they will have, that could be a word composed of two different words or three different words. But rest assured, they are doing this, okay? Yes, now, just a couple of more quick things. Um, just to pay attention, they may not mean anything to anyone, but it's worth um, uh, pointing out um, about the periodic table. And I'm sharing my screen. Can you see the periodic table there? Uh, no. Not yet. Oh, there you go. Should be now. Yep. All right. So a couple of things that really stand out to me when I look, when I look here, I see these things so clearly. Look at this. Um, helium is number two. Okay. Now, we also mentioned that the lion is the, a very common uh, motif in um, in um, religions and so forth well have a look at that and you know that the the sun is helios okay so we've got hydrogen water and then we've got a halogen a light element bringing light called helium well that's the sun and the and that's the sun in leo and that's helios that's the lion you see so helium is Probably the second most common element in a lot of um, in a lot of the say starry objects and um, a lot of the um, uh, out there in the uh, universe, they have detected that helium is almost co also common. So there's another one of the animals. Now, when you come to lithium, how about that? Lithium is number three. Lithium is lithos means stone. Okay, so now we have. Three, three, the number three gives you um, the foundation of a stone, whereas hydrogen is just like one element um, with one um, uh, electron. Um, helium is two, and then lithium, the stone. Now, what else is there to um, notice? The other thing I want to bring to attention Sod sodium, which comes from salt, which is um, the pillar of salt motif, and Sodom and Gomorrah. And it is um, very interesting that it has a rate of um, 11. And look at that um, atomic number there, 22. So 11, 
tw um, multiplied by two, there is 22. So this, um, notice the name of sodium is Na, that gives you the, the word for nature, natural, nation, um, and everything that is natural which has salt. So carbon and sodium, and sodium is a very important element. And so the number 11 also has importance and it has the idea of uh, two ones, which is two, which is duality, which is what salt does. Salt is that element that, um, um, you know, makes bodies and hence it is a polarized element. Magnesium, number 12. Uh, this is to do with uh, magnetism. Magnesium is very, very highly magnetic, and it's number 12. And the other one that uh, stands out is argon, uh, 18, which is 666. Now, argon is 1% of our um, air that we breathe has argon in it, and it is the carrier of all um, other elements. Without argon, the universe cannot function. And without carbon, which is six uh, in the periodic table, or six, 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 six neutrons, six protons, and six uh, electrons, um, there cannot be a universe. So carbon is number six, argon is number 18, six, 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 and argon is absolutely the carrier of all other elements. It's like a glue in the universe. And argon comes from argos, which is the boat, which is the bark, which is the carrier. And so you see the, the, um, the um, 666 motif is actually dealing with argon, the, um, the carrying uh, element. All right, now, I'm going to leave it at that and perhaps do, um, you know, another, um, have another go at um, this because that's, we've already spent half an hour and we've got a lot of other yeah. questions and things to mm -hmm. do. Yeah, but, yeah. but, but the next uh, question is going to pop out of that one too because it's about uh, element number 29, copper. Copper and water. That's what I want to bring you on uh, because uh, there's lots of stuff being said about water, what is the best water to drink uh, because it's being depleted a lot, the O2 depleted and all that. So, uh, and you recently came on Facebook and you posted stuff about uh, copper that was very, very good to drink in copper. So, I would like you to extend on this after. Okay, copper. Copper, yeah. 29. Now, copper and iron, iron's 26. Copper's 29. Right. Now, copper, here's what I do. I have pure copper vessel, okay, and I fill this with distilled water or demineralized water, and I put a very little bit of Celtic salt in the water and leave it overnight and drink this in the morning. I do the same with tin, okay? Now, that one's okay. tin, that one's copper. Now, the reason why you put distilled water in that is so that the other minerals do not react with it in a, an unfavorable way, okay? So, but it is not, um, it doesn't carry any charge. Distilled water has no charge. So, to, in order for the copper to react with the distilled water and you put some Celtic salt in there and now that's going to carry an electrical charge. The other thing I do is I wear copper. So this is a copper, 100% pure copper um, uh, bracelet there. There's another one that's got copper, brass and zinc. You can see the three colors, copper, brass, and zinc. And on the other hand, I also have, this one is copper, 100% pure copper. Now, um, I have done shows on the number 26, iron. Um, yod he va he, Jehovah. Jehovah. 
just to show you the relationships. Um, so you've got Yod, He, um, Va, He. So hang on, Yod. Sorry, I did that wrong. Yod is like this. So Yod, He, Va, He. These come to 26. Je and this is Jehovah. Yod, He, Va, He. Jehovah comes to 26 and in the bible god says i will rule the nations with an iron rod iron is 26. god comes to 26. aleph the first letter in the hebrew alphabet aleph yod and yod 10 and 10 vav is 6 comes to 26. l L, once you put a, an, um, a Hebrew L here, you've got Aleph L. That's the name for God. L comes to 13, 1 and 12. So we see here that iron, iron has been promoted. God is iron. Jehovah is iron. Aleph, the first letter of the alphabet. Elohim comes to 52, which is twice 26 and that's god in plural l god singular is 13 elohim 56 uh, 52 and 52 of course is the number of cards you have in your card deck so 26 all of these numbers all of them go back to iron iron has been introduced to poison our blood and we have red blood so adam Adam also means iron because in Hebrew, Adam is Ma Adim. And Ma Adim is Ma Mars. If you put the R and the S in here, it's Mars Adam. Adam means red. Mars is red. Mars is the ruler of Aries. Mars's element is iron. Now, and is there a relation with the iron added to our food, like in cereals and stuff like that? It's crazy, the amount of iron that they add to the food uh, these days. Then? Yes, to poison us. See, the elites have blue blood because they use copper because they know that copper is the best conductor. And so rather than poisoning us with iron, we are all suffering with iron poisoning. We should be supplementing with pure copper, colloidal copper if possible, or this kind of copper, and then we will be able to actually use the iron because iron builds up. You see, you can't, iron builds up and stays in the system. So a lot of people are full of iron. They are poisoned by the, by the iron. Their blood is red, 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 which is poisoned blood and it should be more toward this color which is why we need copper so rather than 20 the, again, again we see the blue and red uh, shift uh, stuff uh. we do copper is blue iron is red so blue shift red shift so what we have is um uh, obviously, <clears throat> obviously, copper has the ability to um, cause electricity to flow better. Iron is a good conductor too, of, of course, but we know of copper's properties. And copper is the one of the only elements that actually knows what to do with the iron in your body to use it properly. Yeah, that, that's true what you're saying, because in electricity, the, the wire that they use the most is copper. The, if you want a good electrical uh, wire, you use copper. The, it's the most conductive, the most expensive one also. And when you go scrap uh, your metal at the scrap, that's what they pay the most is copper. There got to be something with copper. The. Yeah, copper. And, and, so, and copper is, um, as I said, is Venus's element. And... 29 and 26 iron is Mars. So you can see the polarization. Jehovah, this God of war who shall shepherd the nations with an iron rod, 
This is the Demiurgos. He is an iron-fisted God. Iron is oppressive. Okay, copper is more, it's more malleable, isn't it? You can get copper and you can bend it around. Iron doesn't like to bend, does it? It's rigid. Okay, so, and that's the Demiurge is a rigid God. I'm not saying that the Demiurge is evil and that we hate the Demiurge. No, the Demiurge is a cool guy. It's the creator of material worlds. And that is Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, and all of these guys who have their elements. And Mars is Jehovah because Jehovah is the God of war. And so he is the iron God. Okay. Now we want to get away from that God and go into the embrace of the creator, which transcends all of this demiurgic iron talk and, you know, manipulating talk and control talk. That is the God who truly frees, which is the creator, the source creator. So I'm wondering how you connect these elements that you pulled out, um, the larger named ones, with like how would copper and francium go to, like do those have correspondence, I mean, beyond Venus? And like, because I was thinking about like how do you use these things like to remediate, you know, or like how do we actually use the knowledge? Like we could easily use copper, I'm hearing, but how does it connect to these other elements? Because as you were talking about it, I was thinking about Venus and I was thinking about the elements that we know go with the planets. So I'm just wondering what how do you connect the um the more obscure elements? Yeah, very, very good. <laughs> um so um we we probably know a lot more about copper than we know about francium. So um I just said that copper is Venus's traditional astrological element, which it is. And then I showed how francium lines up with Venus in many, many ways. Well, what you will find is that some of these elements are octaves of other elements and that they also belong to the principality or the rulership of certain planets because that's, that's how it works. Alchemists know this. True uh, learned people who read books and who uh, are learned understand this. Um, you'll probably struggle to, to teach that with your average, you know, foot soldier out there who's been educated in the system. They'll probably struggle with this and, and think, oh, well, if you're not a Dr. Santos, you don't have any PhDs. You can't think like that and you can't, you're not allowed to use your, you, you know, you can't be relied upon for this information. You've got to go to the, the textbooks and everything like that. Fair enough. Um, you know, textbooks are great because, yes, they do give us uh, accurate tabulated knowledge that we can then, you know, um, uh, use to interrelate things. So uh, you would find that if you went through the periodic table, you would find 30 or 40 probably elements that resonate with Venus. And, and um, what you will discover is that each one of these elements will either be one of four things. And that's how you know that you are on top of your game when you understand these four things. There are four humors in the universe. And they are, there are two active humors and two passive humans, humors. The active humors are hot and cold. The passive humors are dry uh, and moist. Okay? Dryness and moisture are passive, patience, and hot and cold are active agents in the universe. Now, remember I spoke about nitrogen. I said nitrogen is fire. How do I know that? Well, because it's ignite. It's igni. Ignitrogen. And the gen on the end is to generate. So if you've got igni, ignis, um, we get the word igneous from that, igneous. Igneous rocks are what kind of rocks? Well, they're the ones that, like magma, they're the ones that come from fire. Fire has melted those rocks, and you can see the effect of fire. Therefore, those rocks are called igneous because igni which is fire, um, agni, 
Agni means, well, Saint Agnes, the saint of the Lamb. Agnes is the Lamb. So, Igni, in Latin, to ignite is nitrogen. Therefore, nitrogen is hot and dry. So, it has the, the active humor of hot, of hot, heat, and it has the passive humor of dryness. So, nitrogen will also harmonize with other elements, like it will harmonize so well with um, iron, because iron is also hot and dry. It's a hot and dry element. Copper is cool and moist. You see? Right, right. Cool and moist. Because Venus is cool and moist. You, you can know these things. Mars is hot and dry, therefore iron must be hot and dry. So you must know your four astrological humours to understand that everything works like this. So, so when I do an astrological chart reading, which we're going to do at the end of this show, I will introduce some of this technology now and I'll, I'll add some yeah. of this about the elements into today's chart reading to show you how I do chart readings. So, if, if I have a look at someone's chart, um, you've got a chart like this. The AC is over here, the MC over here, the DC over here, and the IMC is here. So, what you've got in astrology <clears throat> is this is the first house, this is the second. And 12 and those are the houses okay so now the strong houses are called car cadenes or cardines or angles and they are the first and the seventh the tenth and the fourth now so let's say let's say that um, Okay, let's put Aries over here in the seventh house. Aries. Okay, in the seventh house. Now, Aries is a fire sign, so it's hot and dry. Now, Saturn is cold and dry. So if Saturn is in Aries, let's put Saturn here. Looks like the Hebrew Lamed with a little cross on it. There you go. That's this is Hebrew for L, the letter L, and this is Saturn's glyph. Same thing because L is Saturn. Okay. <clears throat> of course, there's a lot of pseudo syncretists or fake syncretists out there who will laugh at that because they think that L is something else, and then <clears throat> L is Saturn. L is the sun. L is the moon. L is Mercury because when you explain syncretism properly, you can understand this. Many people will fail to understand that due to their undeveloped soul, mind, heart, and everything, they're just underdeveloped. And so they think they know, but they do not know. Forever learning, like, you know, you go to Danny Wilton's channel, you'll be learning rubbish forever, but you'll never come to an accurate knowledge of truth. Same with Cullen Smith, same with Christopher Lord. Their channels are forever learning, but never coming to an accurate knowledge of truth. That's in the scriptures. So now Saturn, Saturn is cold and dry in Aries. Saturn hates Aries because he's too cold. <laughs> Saturn loves to be in Libra. Libra is opposite. What's Libra's symbol? There's Libra, and here's Aries over here. So now let's say there's uh, Mars is over here in Cancer, and it's squaring with Saturn. Now a square, a 90 degrees angle, is very harsh. So if Mars is squaring with Saturn, in Aries and he is cold whereas Aries is hot and dry 
This individual is probably likely to get headaches because Aries is the cerebrum, and if Saturn is in Aries, which is cold, it doesn't like to be in Saturn. Does hates Aries, so that coldness will cause some disturbances. And I, I usually when I do the charts of individuals who have Saturn in Aries, a badly aspecting because this is a, a harsh aspect. Um, usually those people have headaches and problems. Problems, right so what do you do well you administer you administer um, infusions like tea or, or crystals or um, tissue salts that are hot and dry to bring the balance back because this area of the body requires hot and dry Aries is hot and dry so when Saturn transits Aries Every 30 years, it goes around the ecliptic every 30 years. And when it's in Aries, those people have that disturbance of Saturn, that coldness in their mm -hmm. cerebrum. And so what you do, uh, Paracelsus 500 years ago, um, Marsilio Ficino 500 years ago, they cured people with a 100% effective rate by knowing the four humors and knowing when a cold planet is in a hot sign you have to bring the balance back and so let's say let's say um mars is in virgo well virgo is the intestines okay so mars is going to virgo is an earth sign and and earth is cold and dry water is cold and wet cold and moist but earth is cold and dry so if you if mars is in virgo badly aspecting mars is hot and dry virgo is cold and dry you need to understand that that planet is disturbing virgo's organs which are the intestines these people will have a very very fiery problem with indigestion they will have um, reflux, acid reflux. They'll be taking all kinds of pills and big pharma toxins to try and squash all of their indigestion problems when all they have to do is just add hot or dry or cold or hot. And that's what your Chinese practitioners do. They tell you to, they, they, they do your pulse, so they check your pulse, then they look at your tongue. And that's all they do. And they know how to fix you. They say, your liver's too hot. Here's some dandelion. Your kidneys are too hot. Drink some dandelion tea because dandelion is cooling. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you've got to know your teas. You've got to know your crystals. You've got to know your tissue salts. And those are the three things that I work with. There you go. Crystals. You can see I've got wood and copper around here. Why? Because those are the elements that Aryans, hot and dry, require. Mm -hmm. So I use those elements. So maybe not everybody would want to do the cold and moist of the copper. There might be another metal that would be better suited to some people that are already cool and moist, right? Exactly. So, cool. yeah. so what you have to do now what you have to do now is look at the chart, okay? Now, a good doctor, he doesn't give you something for the flu if you walk in there and all you've got is a sore throat. Well, that's just one symptom. You need runny nose, headache, congested chest. You need to feel dizzy. You need to have, the doctor needs, you know, he, he sees you've got a sore throat. He sees you've got congested. He sees 10 different things and he makes a proper diagnosis. You can't just look at someone's chart here and say, oh, Saturn's in Aries. This guy has to um, uh, counteract Saturn's coolness with Aries fire. It may not. It, this person may not get headaches. This per I've, I've done the chart of people with Saturn in Aries that have never had a headache in their life. But they've got other things that Saturn has actually provoked by being in Aries and you've got to know the full you can't just pick sore throat and say oh yeah you've got a flu okay mm -hmm.
Thank you. Great. Now, uh, I, if, the, if, if this is kept uh, hot and dry, I was thinking, there, that's why I was laughing, and I was thinking that's maybe why they program us with HD signals. <laughs> you know, they... You know, HD is everywhere today. Everything is HD, HD everywhere. They they has to do something with this for sure. Well, well, um, your Wi-Fi signals they are all square wave, right? And it's it's they're not even beautiful sine wave like that. This that's your Wi-Fi. Now that rips rips through your the elements of your body: hydrogen, carbon nitrogen and oxygen the four main elements this wave is not very friendly to those elements those elements okay. do not understand this this is hot and dry only this is a very hot and dry wave this one is cool this one is That's cool and moist but the perfect sine wave is the longitudinal wave we don't need this we don't need Wi-Fi. That's the scalar wave of Tesla, free energy. That's, that's the longitudinal pulse of the universe. This is a wave, but here we have compression and rarefaction. And what is that? Compression is blue shift, rarefaction is red shift, and it all happens along one longitudinal line, which is hot and moist. Jupiter, Thor. Thor is the only planet in the cosmos that is hot and moist. Sun is hot and dry. Mars is hot and dry. Only Jupiter, only Jupiter is hot and moist. And that, your plants grow when it's hot and when they've got moisture. Try putting your beautiful plants your tomato and watermelons, try putting them in the cold weather and don't water them ever. No moisture, no heat, and you see what happens. We need all of... It's not just that hot and moist should only exist and no coldness and no dryness. No. See, Saturn is cold and dry. Jupiter, Jupiter is the greater benefic in astrology because he's hot and dry, uh, hot and moist. Saturn is the greater malefic in astrology. He is the evil one. Why? Well, because he's cold and dry. Just, just ask your plants what they think of cold and dry. And then you'll know the effect of Saturn. Saturn is cold and dry. And hence, so, go ahead. No, no, I'm finished. So, would you uh, say that it would be good for us to limit our exposure to Wi-Fi? Like, I have, why I have a, a, a Wi-Fi thing, a modem, uh, what it's called, the, that thing that provides Wi-Fi, the, the router, the router. I have a <laughs> router here. Would you suggest to only operate your cable, internet, or uh, like, or not freak out with all this, brother? I've got a whole cable, eh? in cable. my cottage. When people come to do internet cafe in my cottage here, which every day there's folks coming down from the hill to do internet here, I say to them, you hook up one of these or you have to go elsewhere to get your, your um, internet because okay. I will not do Wi-Fi in, in my, around my holy temple. No way. Wire okay. up. Mar Mar Queen, when she came here, Mar Queen knew about that because when she came here at night, she was un unplugging everything, all the internet. I, I used to wake up in the morning and everything was down. I was, and she used to tell me, "Hey, it's me. I unplug it because I don't want to sleep with the Wi-Fi on." And I'm like, "Okay, yeah, she might be right, but I never knew now to the extent that you're explaining it tonight though, with the the waves and that." Yeah, this wave here, this wave here will make you um, this this. This generates criminal activity, um, anxiety, stress in human beings. You see people are very stressed. Yeah. Um, anxiety, because this is hot and dry. We don't, the body can, cannot withstand a complete 
um, onslaught of hot and dry. It needs moisture. See, this would be much more healthy. Or a DC current. DC, we don't need AC. See, AC is doing that. A, AC because it's called alt alternate current. So what they're doing is they're, it's an alternator is creating, uh, the generator is an alternator which is creating AC, not direct, but alt, uh, alternating current. So it's, but it's, it's not like this, which is pulsing. Everything's alternating anyway. This is DC and AC because it's a pulse, not a particle, not a wave. There's no particles in the universe. There's only pulses. And so this is pulsating. But at the same time, it's connected. It's, it's not um, a disconnected AC current. DC is the current we should be using. And, and that's why there's more and more free Wi-Fi zone everywhere, like especially in McDonald's, free Wi-Fi. Isn't it convenient eh, to, to program the, the sheep in McDonald's? Yeah, well, the reason they do this is because you can put what they call little um, wave packets inside the wave. So they'll put a little message in here and another one here. This one will say, you know, go rape your grandmother. This one will say, eat pig's bums because then you'll get a lot of iron from bacon and eggs. And, and, and this one will say, support global warming the pseudoscience of hypocrite demon controllers. And so you can put packets of information in here. It's called subliminal, you know, it's, it's a subliminal way of controlling humanity. Why? Because in this square wave, they put another one in here, which goes like this. And then they do another one. And there's all kinds of subliminal <laughs> Mate, the they are programming them. people yeah. with the square wave. Hey guys, I just have to go and move my solar panels. I'll be back in yeah. one minute. So does Santos not um, believe in global warming? I don't think so. Uh, I think he Okay, has been this is very in that, yeah. Okay, I haven't heard that, but that's very interesting because I listened to something that um, that group Anonymous put out uh, like a while ago, and it was like a book that it had you download, like a free download of a book. And I was reading it, and it was about like, and it seemed to indicate that in order to control a populace, that what you have to do is get them to believe in a single idea, like united on an idea. And like, since religion is kind of out the window, that like, it, it just occurred to me that like, what would be, we be united behind? And it's like global warming. And so, but like everybody I say that to thinks I'm like really like, off my rocker so I've like never said it out loud to anybody but that's really interesting you, that you guys think yeah. that too is that yeah, the but, reason but me like, uh, global warming it's never something I uh, I think everything is uh, in their matrix probably they conceive it to make us believe that there's a global warming that the earth is warming or stuff like that but if you come in Quebec, you will notice that the earth is not warming. The, the, the winter doesn't get that. I still get snow and lots of snow and it's still very cold. So I don't know what, what they're talking about really. If you go yeah. to region where there is cold, you will see that it's not really warming. But again, it's not the only indicator that tells me that. But yeah, where I live tells me that it's not warming. And also right. also that it's a, it's a hype. Eh? It's a hype, the, the global warming, just to... Uh, well, it, get seems, people also to, uh, it to, seems to me a way to mobilize the more educated class yeah. behind a, a movement that because it said something like it has to reach them in the heart space, not in their mind. And yeah, so like, global exactly. warming would be something that we would all be like, we have to support the planet. So they're able to manipulate us by that heart feeling, whereas yeah. religion used to be what they could use. It's so interesting. Yeah, maybe Santos can extend about it, but global warming to manipulate us... Uh, all in the same uh, direction yeah well it's um it's what they do is they are opportunists whenever they see something scary that they can use for their ends like i mean like as if they can actually fix the cosmos and and 
and correct global warming. I mean, everything is cyclical. Everything is the crest of a wave and the trough of a wave. Well, we went through a hot period. Uh, it's natural. And then we're going to cool down. It's actually now cooling down. And they know that. That's why they changed it from global warming to um, uh, climate Clim change. Because, climate because change, yeah. That way they can change it and mix it up. Oh, it's cold. It's hot. Oh, it's, it's, there's, there, there are too many hailstones out there. We have to, we have to um, get tax off you so that we can uh, write books about naughty hailstones now. And, and, and we're going to have an army of people who, who are, are green and we're, going to, and we're going to protect you. You give us the money. You will arm up and we'll fight global warming and, and terrorism and we're going to fight things that are concepts, you know. These, these are demons. We have to Con understand, folks. Yeah, concepts. You said it. Hmm. These are con artists. These are yeah. con artists. Everything is controlled by the creator anyway. This is why Krishna is called Ishwara Paramakrishna, which means the supreme controller of the universe. Every atom is under the creator's eyesight and knowledge and, and cognizance. Not, not a hair on your head is not known to the universal consciousness, which is the creator. And so it's all under control. We're just, we are here to be witnesses. Just yeah. observe. We're not here to judge. We're not here to, um, you know, do any of those uh, um, uh, interception things, you know, to intercept nature at its work. Sometimes nature destroys because yeah. that's part of nature. It has to. Yeah. If we uh, talk about manipulation, we can also uh, put the time manipulation in it. And that was my other subject that I was going to bring on, the time construct and manipulation that we are victim of. And that prevent, you know, versus the power of the now, versus the power of being in the now and exploiting, exploiting the now fully, like I'm doing now, like you're doing now. You know, we're in the now expressing uh, our birthright and everything all the magnificent and the, the the strength that we have so this is we get that in the now but if i'm constantly manipulated by time and uh, kept in a war calendar and stuff you know it comes and manipulate the masses a lot so i want you to maybe explain it a little bit how how the time manipulation can affect us versus being fully incurred in the era now look. Yeah, well, well, again, time is another illusion. It is um, an effect of magnetism. There's, there is only magnetism. And magnetism produces magnitude, which gives the effect of space and time. Both space and time are created by the Queen of Heaven, Radharani, the consort of Krishna, which is... This black light, this is source. That's Krishna, Christ, black Christ. White light, that's magnetism. That's Radharani. So we've got Radha. Radha Krishna, okay? Radha is white. Black light is source light. That's the source. This is the force. This is rest. This is motion. The woman, the, fem the female energy is moving. All motion, motor, motion, action, it's all feminine. All rest is masculine. We got around the other way around. We always, we always put black as feminine and white as masculine. No way. Now, this is dielectricity. Krishna is dielectricity, which is the field, which is the ether, which is the medium for light, and God is light. 
and it's it's black light these are the black holes dark matter dark energy black goo whatever bullshit they want to call it the ether anything but calling it ether because ether is scriptural and it points you back to the scriptures and and transcendental scriptures and brings you back to god the creator right they you know einstein rejected the ether the black light it's actually black and white light now when these two field modalities rest and motion rub against each other they produce electromagnetism which is red and blue red shift blue shift or you could see it as seven colors the seven colors of the rainbow the rainbow comes from this the rainbow is the symbol of Quetzalcoatl, Kukul Khan, Viracocha, the feathered sun disc of Egypt, because the Aboriginals call it the feathered uh, serpent, the rainbow serpent. Rainbow serpent. Well, rainbow has seven colours, which is red shift, blue shift. One end of the rainbow is red, the other end is blue. That's red shift, blue shift. And the rainbow teaches you, it teaches you, that we see those colors only that's the spectrum that is how much we can see that thin sliver is all we can see and that is the demiogos that is the creator of physical worlds red blue red blood blue blood red pill blue pill it's the rainbow the Which rainbow is- comes from this these two field modalities rest and motion in fact the two, the two co-eternal, co-existent principles of the universe are inertia and inertia and acceleration, black light, inertia, rest. Inertia and acceleration. White light, the pure virginal white light of our mother who art in heaven, is force and motion. Okay? Motion gives us motor. Tom, all is a tom. Tor. All is Taurus fields. That's what a motor is. Because um, Taurus backwards is rot, rotate. Okay, to rotate, that's what Taurus fields are doing. They're rotating. And this rotation, this white and black light, which are not colors, produce the colors produce the chromatic universe that we live in and chrome chromatic chrome and chronos time and chrome color one and the same the colors in the universe from the rainbow all come from saturn because all is atum and atum is saturn okay time and space come from this it's called time dilation you see the forever now is here on the longitudinal plane but see when you have the tropic of cancer up here and the tropic of capricorn over here and this is the equator well the sun on the ecliptic goes from march aries to cancer june to Libra September to Capricorn January and it's going hot cold hot cold and what is happening is depending on the compression of the tropics depends on how much time we get and how fast time you see if I get a rope if this is a rope that is stretched out and you've got someone over here pulling and someone over here pulling that rope The moment you tug on that rope, this guy tugs, 
that guy gets the message instantaneously. That's called, this is what Einstein and, and, and all of these quantum particle idiots try to tell you is what we call um, instantaneous action at a distance. How many magicians and esoteric writers and electricians and, and scientists and alchemists have written about instantaneous action at a distance? Well, it's only through the longitudinal wave. Here there is no speed of light. This is, this is the speed of light here, the wave, and it's 186,000 kilometres per second. But here there's no, there's no speed limit. This is a trillion times faster. This is infinitely faster than the speed of light. The speed of light is electromagnetic. But when you're talking about... Uh, um, magneto dielectricity. This is magneto dielectricity. This is electromagnetism. They are they're two different field modalities. Totally two different things. This one gives you time. This is the forever now. Nothing changes here. Nothing changes along the longitudinal wave. Here, all particles, so called, are entangled. Here we have time dilation. Electromagnetic retardation, displacement of you know spiral rotating energy. It's it's displaced. That's why they call it um, shift, blue shift, redshift, because it's it's there's it's not um, the magnetic energy has got retardation. It's called the Lemur frequency frequency, Lemur, um, and so. It's built in. So time is built into the wave. And the wave belongs to Saturn because he is the master of electricity. There you go. Very well explained. Do but you have any question, Lily? I do, because this would I think this would be a moment to bring up the fact that in this book, The Light of Egypt, that this guy Thomas Burgoyne is talking about how from the external side, um, that the wave is that the wave is one way, but from the internal it's a mirror image like from the spiritual side do you know what I'm talking about and it's really kind of hard to wrap your mind around but he would say that the that the tropics are opposite right so that from the internal from the spiritual side that the Tropic of Cancer would be at the bottom and the Tropic of Can Capricorn would be at the top and so I'm just having a little trouble like understanding what he's talking about and I feel like that you've integrated the knowledge and I'm wondering if you could kind of talk about that for a minute um, yes, easy, easy. So um, Walter Russell was good at explaining this because he did everything in vortexes like this. That's how he did the wave. Okay, so we've got spiraling. Okay, and then what's what's going out this way is also going out this way at the same time. Okay. But what's doing that is also now has got another plane in the middle here, which is also going like this. And so now you have another. Let's superimpose maybe a different colour. Now you've got this going on. So what we have is... And Ken Wheeler is good at, at explaining this because he says we, when, we, when humans draw a line like this, they start here and they go like that. That's how we do a line, mm -hmm. okay? Well, it's a point line. Point line. Well, nature nowhere does this. Only humans do this because we can. Nature can't. Can't do that. What nature does is it goes like this. Point line so it goes from here and it goes like this okay but it just doesn't do a straight line it does curved linear lines so like a flower like a flower that open yes so it goes like that uh -huh. okay so if it goes like that if it just doesn't go like that it goes like that, but if we look at it from here, 
we're not looking at just this. We're looking at, we have to give it depth. So we've got this. Yeah. And so this has got depth this way. It's got amplitude that way, width, and it's got height. And so it's, it's doing this. This is the center. Walter Russell says this is where magnetism is and all of the rest is electricity. Mm. So, but he's, he's incorrect because he's saying that white light is the still centering light of the red, red and blue. He's saying white light is what centers red and blue, but it's not. White light generates red and blue. Black light is the centering light. It's black light, not white light. So he, he totally didn't even regard black light. So what we have, but he did get this right. He said, when the energy is going that way, compressing, that's what we call an electron. When it's going, when it's going that way, expanding, that's what we call a proton. And this point here, this, this inertial plane here in the center, that is the neutron. Well, I'll tell you exactly what a, what a proton and a neutron and an electron is. Mm -hmm. It is dielectricity, neutron, black light, magnetism, Proton, white light, and they're always together. Hence, uh, sorry, if I grab that again, that wave that I went like this, like that, well, mm -hmm. what we have to do is just do that. Uh, is it not? Is it yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we have now, what we have now is we have the child of the neutron and the proton, Krishna and Radharani, white light, black light, and it's called electricity. And electricity is quite simply to do, simple to explain. This is how easy it is to explain. It is... And I need new ones of these. That's what electricity is. Electricity is the material world. Adam, red, Eve, blue, iron, copper. Red blood, blue blood. Roses are red, violets are blue. Republicans are red, Democrats are blue. Neither gives a shit about you. Red siren, blue siren. Hot water, red, tap. Blue cold water tap. Okay, so that's all that's going on because electricity gives you polarity, not magnetism. Magnetism, the proton, and dielectricity, the, the, the first yin and yang. See, this is the second one. The red and blue yin and yang, this is the demiurgos. The white and black yin and yang, that is not the demiurgos. That Yin and Yang does not participate in the material world. That is the transcendental one. That is the original one, black and white, mm -hmm. because black and white are not material. Okay. They are not material. They are spiritual. So you see, dielectricity, magnetism, and electricity are, in fact, neutron, proton, and electron. Mm -hmm. And how that works is simple. All atoms are gyroscopes. They're all gyroscopes. That's an atom. Have you seen that symbol anywhere before? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes. Now he said that's Pisces. Pisces? Yeah, it's what it said in the book, and I found that so interesting. Yeah. 
No, I know, but in here he was saying like in the spiritual understanding of the house system that when you got to Pisces, it was that symbol because it was talking about coming back up the wave and yeah. Yep, yep. All atoms, all is atom, and all atoms are little crosses. That's all they are. Because you've got the inertial plane, and then you've got the torus field. Right. Going around like that, the figure eight. And these are toruses. And so all, all the donuts that you see, they've got in the middle, they've got a hyperboloid. That's the hourglass in the middle. And then this is called the torus. This is the bull, and this is the torus. So you've got torus, tor, rotate. Mm -hmm. Rotate, tor, same word, and then you've got in the middle, you've got the hyperboloid bol, boloid. So, bull, that's the bull, okay, what? and that's red. Taurus is the word, is means red, and bull means blue. Same letters. But would you say that if you were to put the zodiac on there and what he's saying, because he's saying one's a mirror image, would you say that one twists in and one twists out and that the spiritual process is somehow related to, to, to what's coming in and what, what's twisting out? Does that make sense at all? Like, I feel like that there's, there's one impulse that goes out, but there's another impulse, I guess, blue shift that goes in. Yes, yes. Red is going out, blue is going in. Blue is compressing. Okay. Red, blue is compression, red is rarefaction. So compression is this. Compressing the air and rarefying the air is, it's a breath. Mm -hmm. okay. And so you have your inertial plane and then you have your divergent rays going like that and then converging diverging, converging, and so this is basically what you see for Pisces. Oh, right. Is it not? It is. Huh. And Aries is what? The first yeah. sign is Aries, number one. The last sign is Pisces, number 12. Jesus is the Lamb of God and the Fisherman of Men. And he says, I am the first and the last because he is the Lamb of God, Aries. And that symbol is basically just a Taurus field. And here we've got the inertial plane, Pisces, and the Taurus field and the hyperboloid in the middle. Hmm. All the glyphs of astrology, all of them go back to the Taurus field, which is a little gyroscope. You look at a gyroscope, it's got a flywheel in the middle and then it's got... A tree like that and and so what you do is it this is accretion disk it's like a flywheel and that's the inertial plane and the tree in the center that's the the tree of life in the middle of every atom I can I can tell you exactly how our solar system works Right. And the, Without, why? Why is the apple? Because when I see this, I see the shape of an apple too, and you see the apple everywhere in all the mythology. Everywhere it's the apple, and even on the computer we have it, even with a bite on it. So, what's the <laughs> correlation with this and the apple? Um. Okay. Apollo, there you go, Apollo. <laughs> because because Apple is related to Apollo, which is Saturn. Okay, Apollo, Apple, the apples of Apollo, and Apis is the bull. Apis is the bull of April. April is what Taurus. 
April, the bull Taurus turns up because April is dealing with Apis, the bull. That's why the um, Alexandrians 2,000 years ago when syncretism prevailed throughout the whole of the globe, they worshipped Serapis, which was a bull god. Ja bull long. Ja bull. That's the Freemasons. They tell you that's the name of God. Ja bull long. Well, Serapis also gives you um, uh, what else? There's a lot of words that 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 come that have this apple, and so. But there's the serotonin. You know serotonin. It's one of the serotonin. Stuff. Seraphim. 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 It comes from the same. The same thing, you just put a, a pH there, you've got seraphim, right? Well, that all comes from Apis, from the bull, because the bull is the Taurus field. And it's the most common motif of animals in the universe, the ox or the bull. Wow. Do you have any question, Nini? Yeah, well, I'm also thinking about how, like, on the Taurus field, that is, like, the, the zodiacal wave that you show. Like, each of us have planets on different parts of that wave. And I'm just wondering, like, it seems like, you know, constantly there are different waves twisting in, you know, like, of the energy. And I'm wondering how, like, the, how does that relate? Like, you know, there are different waves going on all the time. And, you know, how do we use skillful means in order to navigate, you know, like... We, maybe we have a planet on the wave, you know, and then is, I don't know, like I'm just thinking like maybe like that, uh, that a wave twists in, that's the now moment, and then we've got something else twisting out. Like there's something going on energetically with the process. Does well, we learned from the, um, the little uh, graph that I put up before that when energy goes out that way, it's also instantaneously projecting energy out the other way at the same time it can only work that way so okay this wave you could call it the base wave okay there's always a base wave so when you play um say a musical note so there's there's an e okay so you can hear that e but but in there there are other harmonies like there's uh, a g sharp and a b and there's harmonies, harmonics. So what you've got now is you've got you can only you can only call this E because it is E, and that's that's the full. So the the, the length of this string is going to be it's always going to be an E, okay? So but at the middle of the string, I play that. That's a higher octave E. So you can hear that, okay? But but in every so you can call that the bass tone, right? So when you half that now, if you see the string, you'll see a wave like this in the string, and you'll call that E. Okay, now that's the start of the guitar neck, that's the end of the guitar neck. So you've got one bass note. Now at the same time, something else is going on. You've got this. Mm. And then you've got another one. Right? So um, they are called overtones or harmonies. Okay? And, and so astrologically, so you could be, say, Virgo. Okay? So your son's in Virgo and it's producing this Virgoan tone in your body, okay? Now, depending on all the other planets and how they are arranged in the chart, there will be many, many other subtones and overtones, over, sub, doesn't matter, but they will, there'll be millions, endless, and you could pick one of those waves, isolate them. In the studio, you can isolate the waves, the frequency, pull it out, take it right out if you want, it's called mastering. 
You can put waves in, you can take them out. So what you're doing is you say, I don't like this, you take it out. And so, but that wave there could have been producing a lot of harm to your body. And so you cancel it. Or it could have been a good overtone. So in your astrological chart, the whole chart is one tone. But when you look at the other planets, you see undertones, overtones, subtones, harmonies, harmonics. So you've got to be able to look at the whole picture. Like a musician, he can't just go, um, well, I'm going to entertain you guys tonight. Here we go. Just play one note all night long. You'll get thrown out of the gig. So a musician, he's got to know how to play chords, rhythms, syncopation, harmonies, harmonics. He, and that's what the astrologer does. He doesn't just have a look at one thing. He separates all the parts and then puts them back like a, a good watchmaker in Switzerland. He's got a million little things that you wouldn't know what you would never know where to start to put that watch together. But he starts, and then after twenty minutes, he's got a watch ticking, telling the time. So the same is with astrology. The same is with energy. This is energy, and to understand energy, you see most people because of their limited education and their limited indoctrination, they think energy is this. Two things, positive and negative, polarization, duality. But it's not. Nothing in the universe is that simple. It starts simply. It does maintain a simple foundation, but energy must be understood like this. Two becomes four. Four becomes 12. Mm -hmm. And now you understand every sine wave. You understand that every sine wave starts with plasma. Aries, cardinal fire. Fire is plasma. energy radiance air is gas water is liquid earth is solid now now we're not talking astrology anymore now we're talking science and scientists will say oh yeah forget the four elements that's all astrological poo poo demon devil that's from the devil we talk in terms of Four states of matter, plasma, gas, liquid, solid. Okay, let's humour the scientists then, shall we? Okay, so let's teach the electricians about electricity, shall we? The electrician will turn around and say, oh, yes, it's positive and negative. You've got a battery, that's the positive terminal, that's the negative terminal. Yeah, if you're simple-minded, that battery is doing 12 things, not two things, 12 things. Each wave starts with plasma, each wave. Every wave starts here, every wave, every wave. Not just some waves, some waves start in Capricorn, Earth. Impossible. No energy can start with Earth. It can never start with Earth. All energy is transcendental plasma. First, it is fire. Fire is the generator. Tor, Taurus. The creator, the actor, the author of the universe is this. Plasma. So, plasma, then Taurus is solid, then Gemini is gas, then Cancer is liquid. And along the ecliptic, this is what's going on. When a wave starts, it is fiery. Then it is earthy. Then it is gaseous. Then it is liquid. And then it repeats. Fire, earth, air, water. Fire, earth, air, water. But not the same. Because there are four elements, but there are three modalities. Cardinal, fixed and mutable. Okay, so... 
the elements will repeat, but the modalities will not. So cardinal fire will only happen here. It's the only place along the ecliptic. Over here in Leo, you've got fixed fire. That's a different kind of fire. That's cardinal fire, Aries. That's fixed fire, Leo. Then Sagittarius is mutable fire. Okay? Etc. Etc. Let's do a chart reading, shall we? Yeah, uh, she had a question for you uh, regarding astrology first, and then maybe we can go Oh, I think the... we've got them. No, let's do the chart. You got yeah, them? That was awesome. Oh, the, the way that he just talked about the harmonies, oh, okay. like, that is so great. That's how two chart. That's how two, um, like, transits fit in, because you would want, when you're looking at a transit chart, you would want to harmonize with the natal harmonies that are and overtones that are already there. That's a great metaphor and way yeah. to think about it. That's the so, way to do it. Yeah. So the, the bird chart tonight that we're going to do is one of my uh, great brother, a uh, guy I discovered, but he discovered me through uh, Motivation Academy and probably the Truman Show also is uh, Ricky Longhill, Richard Langdon, his real name, and is born on the 14th of August, 1979 in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania. At, uh, he told me between 4 and 5, so I said, okay, we'll go with 4.30. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like that. We really need the exact time. But anyway, 14th of August, 79, I'll put that in. See what we can do. Yeah, maybe he's going to come up with something. But... So was that 4 p.m.? Yeah, 4 p.m. And what was the place again? Erie, Pennsylvania. How do you spell that? Uh, Erie is E R I E, Erie, Pennsylvania. P E N N S Y L V A N I E, Pennsylvania. All right, 4 p.m. I'll share my screen and we'll have a look. This time we'll do this chart with the. With the um, with the idea of the medicals, okay? So, yeah. now, first thing you notice here is um, this individual has got Sun conjunct uh, mm. Jupiter and Venus. Okay, so, can you see that? Yeah. All right, now, now, he's a Leo, so his Sun is in Leo, okay? Now, um also the sun is receiving two harsh squares one from the moon you can see that red line red shift bad blue lines blue shift good see those blue lines to pluto that's all good hmm. now the sun he's at the top of that red pyramid that red pyramid there you can see that there um uranus over here Moon over here, sun over there makes what's called a T-square. Now, I know for a fact that these will cause um, medical situations in the body. Now, Leo is the heart and the circulatory system. This guy has probably got what we call, erroneously, um, hereditary heart condition, okay? He might think, oh, my father... You know, and his father had heart problems and his father died of a heart attack. It, it always carries through the chart. Here I can see clearly, 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 this guy will have heart and blood circulation issues, okay? Now, what kind of issues? Well, <clears throat> the son loves Leo, so this is not causing any problem except for those squares. Those squares will be, from the moon especially, um, they will hurt hurt the sun, okay? Jupiter is also hot and moist, and Venus is cool and moist. So these two planets are bringing moisture here into the heart and into the blood and and the circulatory system. So this is an, ex, an excess of moisture, okay? Moisture is the problem here, not... Uh, not warmth because uh, uh, Leo is warm. It's it's fire, 
and it's hot and dry, but Venus will bring wet and and Nep and Jupiter also is very wet, very moist. So moisture is going to be a problem here. Okay, so um, for the blood, this individual will need to um, supplement or, or take um, uh, herbs, perhaps infusions of tea, which will dry up the blood. Keep it keep it as dry as possible because there's too much moisture in there. And I would recommend to take magnesium phosphate, okay, because when your Leo is suffering, which this is the case, uh, the tissue salt for Leo is magnesium phosphate, okay, and, and that will um, help in the heart, it will soften the heart and the um, arteries and the veins, keep them nice, soft and pliable and flowing. And and that will correct itself. He all he needs to know is look at the planets that are in Leo to realize that they are too wet. the The warmth is good. Venus is warm. She's not exactly cold, but Jupiter is hot. Sun is hot. So we've got two orbs that are hot, which correspond well with Leo hot and dry. So and the sun is hot and dry. So that's his home. Leo is the domicile of uh, the sun is the domicile of Leo, so that's good. Now, Jupiter, though, is a little bit uncomfortable there, and that is simply because he's, he's too, there's too much moisture. Now, having considered that, and I'm not a doctor, and I'm not a naturopath, and I'm not a, you know, a, a biochemist or a, an expert on you know, um, um, the body and whatnot, but I know that in, in Leo, these planets are probably um, not so harmful, okay? Because why? Well, because <clears throat> blood flows and it's moist, is it not? There is moisture in blood. So Venus and Jupiter are probably not disturbing this sign so much at all. I would say it's these planets here squaring with them. <laughs> And um, I would still look at this and I would still suspect that there's too much moisture in the blood. Okay. Now, the other problem here I can see is um, Taurus. The moon is good in Taurus. It, it exalts in Taurus. So it's a great moon. This individual has absolutely got um, lots of um, essential dignity. Sun in Leo, uh, moon in Taurus, beautiful. Mars in Cancer, bad not good okay because mars falls in cancer it exalts in capricorn opposite but here i would say um there's nothing wrong with the humors uh moon would be um cold and moist and and so taurus is cold um and so they harmonize quite well not a problem but again i would still consider taurus to be weak due to that T-square and the, um, the disharmonious energy um, through those red aspects pointing to Taurus. So I would take here, in the case of this guy, I would take um, sodium sulfate for Taurus. And that will help with the uh, endocrine system as Taurus is the ruler of the endocrine system. Hey, stop it. Shut up. Those are me birds. You going crazy? Um, and Scorpio too. Um, Scorpio is calcium sulfate. So this individual needs Leo, Virgo, Libra salts because um, all Leos are deficient in those three salts. And then on top of that, he would need Scorpio, which is debilitated. I can see that here. Taurus is debilitated, and so is Sagittarius. Okay, now Sagittarius is silica. This individual definitely needs some silica. And um, that will show, the symptoms will show on the face. You can tell the deficiencies by facial diagnosis. Um, so this individual needs seven salts. And I would probably be, um, I'd be looking at Mars in Cancer here. This will, um, 
This will be not very good. Too hot. Mars is too hot for Cancer and too dry. Um, cancer is cold and wet. Mars is hot and dry. So this is totally not good here. This will affect the, um, the stomach. This individual will probably have some stomach problems. Um, Mars will, because Cancer is the, um, the uh, digestive system. Okay, every sign has its respective system and it will be too hot. Too much fire in the stomach. Um, you I know. thought cancer was the lungs. Uh, and Gemini. The, and, oh, okay. And that uh, Virgo was the digestive system. Um, <laughs> Virgo is more to do with the excretory, but it is oh, okay. also the bowels. Virgo is the bowels and the intestines and the excretory system. Mm -hmm. uh, cancer is totally the digester. The stomach is cancer and the spleen and um, what else? The breast. Um, you see the, the, the milk of the mother and, and all of that, the fluids there. So, But the spleen and the stomach is ruled by cancer. So this person probably has uh, digestive problems and probably could have um, spleen um, issues, okay? Now, just a, a general reading here. Um, I, we notice that there are many planets here in the eighth house. The eighth house is dealing with um, uh, occult knowledge and um, also sexual um, energy. It's very sexual. Um, there's other things too, like it deals with death, it deals with inheritance from partners and other people. Um, so this individual having so many beautiful planets here, Jupiter, Venus, Sun, can definitely expect um, some kind of an inheritance or wealth from a partner, um, some sort of support from a partner, a marriage partner and, you know, um, some kind of um, assistance there and lots of resources coming from the partner. So this will be a wise individual to partner up with, um, with partners. But um, it also indicates, um, this is also a very spiritual uh, area too, deep esoteric knowledge is to be uh, uncovered and will be uncovered by this individual. Um, Saturn in the ninth house by day is pretty good. Um, also, uh, this is the house of spirituality, uh, dreams, visions, um, religion and spiritual practice. Um, again, higher learning. We, the North Node is here. So the North Node tells you where to spend uh, a lot of um, life energy. Um, so as to get as the most you can from the chart. So basically the North Node, which is Rahu, the head of the dragon, tells you um, what you should uh, master, cultivate, develop, improve and, um, and perfect in the lifetime. So this individual needs to, you know, uh, learn spiritual secrets yeah. deep deep penetrating spiritual secrets needs to um uh, embrace higher learning must learn the higher secrets of uh life and put them to practice um so spiritual practice is here in this house the individual definitely definitely needs to take care of that part of the life okay Pluto here in the 10th house is a big, big, big promising and wealthy career. Um, Uranus is in the social 11th house, the social life, friends, clubs, groups, etc. This is also very good because um, Uranus is definitely a very active kind of a planet 
um, bringing forth a lot of activity in that area. So starting from here, the social life, Uranus in the 11th, uh, Pluto in the 10th, this is the public life. Here we have higher learning and here we have deep learning, secret learning. All of this is where most of the action is happening. Um, so I would be taking care of these spiritual themes here of the 8th and ninth house. Then we've got the moon over here in the 6th house. Now that has to do with the lesson there would be, um, you know, service to others. It corresponds with Virgo's um, designations. And so Moon is the, um, the first lady. She is the reactor. She um, um, gives, uh, I guess, mental and emotional energy to the house. So this individual needs to emotionally charge himself um, when it comes to serving others. Do it with emotion. Do it with all your mind and heart. Have your heart in it. Um, know that the moon is um, shining her moonshine onto others here and it would be wise to um, channel that moon energy and apply that, serving others, okay? So moon is telling you to serve others. Sun in the 10th house is telling you to acquire deep, deep esoteric wisdom. Uh, Saturn is giving you the greatest of um, counsel when it comes to religion and spirituality, deep visions. This person, uh, if, if this is the right time of the native at uh, 4 p.m., well, um, this individual is going to have, you know, um, a, a high station in um, in life when it comes to uh, learning the higher secrets and teaching them. He'll be a great teacher. Saturn is a teacher. He is. He is yep. already. Yep. All right. There's lots of other things. Yep, but hold on, hold on. You touched the the, the point on many because uh, he was uh, commenting in the chat at the same time you were reading it, and he was saying that his uh, grandpa his paternal grandparents had heart problem, and you were mentioning it. Uh, he had problem with his tummy as a child, very much. He had a lot of acid reflux in his twenties, very bad, and he has a mild scoliosis. So you touched on the other point. Yeah, okay. So if I grab my um, synchrota wheel, which I will, will do just quickly. Um, so this is uh, what I call the, the synchrota wheel. Let's get rid of um, that. What we can do is have a look at the specific degree. The sun is on the 21st degree of Leo. I want to see if there's any um, other physical things there. And we see there's nothing specific there on the 23rd, uh, 21st degree of Leo. But that deacon there has to do with uh, circulation. So in this case, it looks like blood and circulation rather than heart. The blood and the circulation need to be addressed. Possibly... Um, I don't know. Jupiter what? could probably cause expansion and sort of like uh, problems with high blood pressure. I'm hunching. And what about that red triangle in there? He's asking. Well, that's that's causing tension. Those red lines, those are squares, 90 degrees. As you can see, Uranus is 90 degrees away from the sun. And that is a very, um, you know, um, uh, abrupt... Uh, angle. The blue ones are more harmonious. The This one here, for instance, from Neptune, that's called a trine. Um, that's from Sagittarius to Leo. Those are both fire signs. So they are harmonious because they're both in fire. Okay, so the blue lines usually go from, see the moon here? She's sending a blue line from Taurus to Virgo. So she's trining Saturn and Saturn sending a beautiful blue line there to the moon. Those are both Earth. So you see the, um, the blue lines in the chart, they are harmonious because 
they usually only are in the same element okay whereas your squares so sun squaring the moon sun is in leo moon is in taurus that's fire and earth so that those elements are contrasting so the moon is probably causing and uranus over here they are causing the disturbance to the heart not so much venus uh, Jupiter and Sun these planets are okay together okay this is a good um, stellium here this is very good this individual will be very generous and very loving from the heart I mean he's got Sun Jupiter and Venus and Mercury in the heart this individual communicates from the heart ex very very expressively um, you 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 just have to check his channel. It's rise and love, and you will. That's his channel and love. So imagine he speaks from the heart. He's a, he's gonna be a world famous poet in a very a very short time. Yeah, well, Mer Mercury in Leo will um, cause the heart to be very fluent in expressing. So this individual needs to know that he's got a massive massive. Um, uh, heart um, energy okay four planets in Leo in the eighth house very creative very creative the eighth house generates a lot of creativity it's one of those artistic places sexual energy is there too so good libido nice and strong and and, and sexual energy is um, um pure and divine so it should be channeled correctly and um this this will be a, a a man with a big heart and a big future but this mars in cancer uh lots of acidity and lots of um you know problems there with with stomach i would say so um that needs to be addressed i can go way further into this and and um give other suggestions here but Mars is also, Mars and Mercury are not aspecting in this chart, which means they're not talking to other planets. They are all um, on their own, which means um, sometimes you have to engage your action principle because Mars is, is not engaged. So that has to be engaged for you to get action done so you don't procrastinate. And Mercury will sometimes, this will be sort of like an individual who sometimes doesn't communicate um, unless um, engaged or, or um, unless uh, provoked or uh, invited to speak because Mercury um, not aspecting tends to um, disengage itself from, from communication, etc. So... These are just things to keep in mind. They're not pitfalls. They're not uh, weaknesses in the chart. They're just um, things to learn so you can know your chart better. Yeah, that's it. So thank you very much, uh, Santos. Do you have anything right. to add? No, no, that's about it. So we just really? showed how to, um, how to tell by the four humours um, which signs and which parts of the body can be suffering. Yeah. Greatness. Thank you very much for uh, coming again tonight. It was greatly appreciated. So as I say all the time, stay away from Babylon evil. You're too much of a wonderful people for that. So boom, we're out. Bye. Great. Thanks, Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. See you next week. Au revoir. Au revoir. Ja, Rastafari.